time around, he's not going to leave it to the judges. There's been no, no, there's been no mindset to try to win this fight on points. You know, Joseph Parker, we know, is an excellent boxer, one of the best jabs in the business. Ask um, Andrew Ruiz, ask uh, Carlos Takam how his jab is, and it's, it's a killer. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a simple solution. We're not having a boxing match with Joseph Parker. It has to be a fight. I can guarantee a knockout in this fight. There will be a knockout. This is not going the distance. This is about how much Joseph Parker can take. He's got a great chin. He's went 12, 12 rounds with AJ, 12 rounds with Dylan White, who hit him on the button many, many times. Derek's going to have to do something very, very special on Saturday night. And, you know, he's brought in the big guns, Buddy McGirt, you know, a Hall of Fame trainer. You know, we're adding as whatever we can to give Derek what's needed to do the impossible. A lot of people are not giving Derek a shot in this fight. But when you see how Derek comes across the ring in the first round, I think you'll understand exactly where this fight's going. And it's going in a very, very destructive manner. It's going to be all out explosion from the first round. And uh, don't you know, get your popcorn and don't go to the toilet. Yeah, I agree. And I agree with what David said. It, I can only see the fight playing out one way with Derek come forward and bring in war, which he has done over numerous fights in the recent years. And I see Joseph boxing a smart fight. And if Joseph can practice and if Joseph can put into practice what we've been rehearsing and training, then I can see Joseph winning by late stoppage. Um, and as Derek said, we don't want to leave it anything to the judges. The only way to guarantee victory in this game is by getting a knockout. And so as much as they're going for it, we're going to be going for it as well. See, Andy Lee, you know, he's got an old way of thinking. You know what I mean? So what, we, what they, I, I think they're going to do is try to box, yeah. But they're also going to try to fight us inside when they want to fight us inside. Not when we want to fight inside, when they want to fight inside. You know, they want to dictate it. So that I know, I mean, because, you know, they're not going to try to box all night. I mean, I know, I know a guy like Andy, how he thinks. You know, sometimes you got to try to be the guy at his own game for a little while. So what we got to do is we just got to get down and dirty. We got to hit him on his thigh. We got to hit him on his knees, his back, anywhere. Oh, we're going to mug you, man. I'm just, the only thing safe is your balls. Anything else, we're going after everything. We're going for the gusto. I mean, we got we to gotta drag it down like that. It's no, it's no secret. You know, people say, you know, buddy, you know, are you going to get Derek to stick and move? I'm like, what, are you crazy? <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got to be Derek. You just got to sharpen up, I mean, smooth the rough edges, but you got to let him be Derek. And I know that, you know, they're, they're going to try to box, yeah, but I also know they feel in the later rounds they're going to try to fight him inside a little bit, try to break our man down. So we're prepared for that. I'm very prepared for this fight. I've had a great training camp with Andy. We started off in Ireland. Then we moved over to Morecambe. We, had, we have great sparring under our belt, um, great pad work, bag, everything. And um, I feel like with this fight, physically, mentally, I'm in a great place. Probably the best I've been in a while. Yeah, you know, I love fighting. Um, put yourself in the world title shot. It's, it's okay, you know. Dylan White's been on, on the world title shot for the last five years. You know, <laughs> he hasn't gone anywhere. So uh, I don't want to put myself in those positions. I just want to put myself in positions where I get to fight good fights, basically. And... Uh, and this is right. I mean, I'm fighting Joseph Park again, and then after that, we'll see what happens. I expect I'm going to pull. I'm going to do what I do best. You know, come forward, fight, chuck, chuck hell. You know, uh, do what I do every day. You know, just, just roll the dice and just rock and roll. You know, and just go at it. You know, come out those gates. You know, just go. <laughs>to step up I do and I perform being the underdog for me is no no different I'm, I'm always the underdog on the big night so um, the more you tell me that I can't do it the more I'll prove you that I can yeah you've got to remember that going into the Terry Harper we just come off a, a lockdown you know financially you know the bit I, I was didn't know when I was going to box again um, I had the baby 24-7 because the school's just shut um, 
and I was just in a, in a bit of a pickle about where, where I was going to go, when the opportunity was going to arise. Obviously, we got that opportunity and, and the baby came along to all the sessions and she was a big part of that camp. And um, yeah, it was just it was just great to be back and, and I was starting from down the mountain kind of thing, mentally, physically, emotionally. And now I'm not there after the Teddy Harper, I'm at the top of the mountain and to, I'm progressing up. Um, I'm not starting from the low place that I was, building myself up to the Teddy Harper fight. I'm starting at the Teddy Harper and building myself up on that. My stats show it, you know, my body mechanics show it, my times, my weight, everything says that I'm well better than I was for the Harper camp. And I knew, I, I know I have to be that. Yeah, I think in boxing, you know, one, one point changes everything. And I do believe I have power. Um, I don't, I don't like making predictions. I don't want to disrespect anybody by saying that, but um, yeah, I do believe I've got the power to do so. And after the traumatic experience of round eight with the half a fight, I promised myself, you know, they, that they are learning curves and that will never happen again. So if I get that opportunity, it will, it'll be the end of the fight. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that this is why we're taking the fight, and um, well, we don't take any any easy fights. I, I, I'm in this sport to, to fight the best, and um, in terms of training camp, our, our training camps are pretty much always the same. Where uh, we train for every single fight as if it's going to be my hardest fight to date, and uh, my mindset, my mentality just doesn't change from from uh, fight to fight. So um, yeah, looking forward to a great fight on, on Saturday. <music>
So, um, you know, this is my opportunity to get back in the ring and, uh, and showcase everything that me and Roy have been working on over the last year and a half. And, uh, you know, we've done a lot of work. You know, I, I have been inactive in terms of not being in the ring fighting, but in terms of what I've been doing in the ring with Roy as Jim, uh, super active, you know, every day, week in, week out, uh, learning, improving. You know, I think I'm one of the only fighters in the game that can say that during COVID, I actually improved as a fighter. You know, most fighters probably even stayed the same or got worse. I think I've, I've ascended. So um, it's just up for me now to go out there and, and, and show off the skills. <music> Eddie, I believe that of course I can become the next champion. As you said, I come off a good win for the British title. It's not like I was in a dark place in my career and it's like, oh, this is the only opportunity. I've got momentum in my career and I've only took this fight because I believe I can win and I want more momentum. As you said, um, people talk about me stepping up from the British and moving on. My career has been a bit backwards, although it looks like I've just won the British and moved on. I've been beating unbeaten guys from early in my career. I've beat guys 12 and 0, 10 and 0, 12 and 1. 14 and 0. So I could have, if you look at the, all the other Brits who's pushed on, they've had one big domestic duff up and then they've moved on to the world scene. I've had loads, so I've had loads of experience. When's the time to move on? Like, I can't keep fighting domestically. I've had like five good domestic wins. It's time to push on. I've got enough experience. I've got to push on. I believe the time's now. A year ago, two years ago, if you asked me if this is the time, I'd have said no, I wasn't ready. Now I'm ready to go. 100%. Um, I think he's uh, one of the greatest fighters in light heavyweight um, division. This is why he's perfect for the job, because I believe, um, as you say, people mention the other light heavyweights. Um, sometimes I wasn't getting mentioned and I believe like I was getting overlooked. I've beat great fighters and after I've beaten them, people saying, oh, he's not all that, he's not all that. But granted, it's been at domestic level and I believe that beating someone like Dimitri Bivol is a great WBA super champion and a lot of respect to him. He's one of the best out there. I'll fully get the credit I deserve. Of course, uh, first of all, I want to say uh, thank you to you, to Craig Richards and his team uh, to take this fight and uh, and uh, I'm missing for fighting and uh, I'm, I'm really uh, looking for to go in the ring and uh, make a great fight for all of boxing fans and uh, you know I, I have a dream uh, to be an undisputed champion but I have uh, some goals uh, to fight uh, uh, to make a fight in St. Petersburg to fight in uh, America and to, to fight in England and now my goal uh, uh, realizing uh, I just believe in my skills uh, I just uh, believe I can uh, beat him and uh, move uh, forward again but of course I think about only May 1st my life uh, I'm living uh, until May 1st and then we will see what will happen but uh, I believe I train on all my life. I, I'm in boxing since I remember myself and of course I, I have to be winner.